It's April and I'm feeling ho 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 ish. Um, Christmas wise, I uh, wanna make something completely unnecessary. This is the tabletop wreath. I got a new upgrade for you. It uses one whole Ogo and uh, it was really quite fun to make and so super easy. And you know, pop it out. Voila. Maybe use battery operated candles instead of the real thing. I'll leave that to your discretion. And this is a really cute idea and you can customize it for any shape you want to make that's in the round. <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. <laughs> oh. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. And welcome to the studio table and we have this table topper and I'm going to make a table topper that matches this particular va uh, vase or vase however you want to say it. So I would call it a vase. So what we have here is that we can customize this. So I don't need to write you a pattern for this because it's truly just customizable and it's, you can see that it's not gonna fit this. So let's make a wreath that will fit this. Now this is the Ogo that I used. It was just a different colorway, and you can see that when you do with the Ogos it really does transition nicely. You can see that I put in a white piece here. The interior piece should be a cotton because cotton is one of the strongest yarns out there just in case there is a fatigue in any way with the stretch. At least that the cotton yarn probably won't most likely not break on you. So without further ado let's head right on into this because this is a, a really easy one today. Step one, either decide on how big you wanna make this or use an item in order to measure it out. And so what I want to do is with a piece of cotton yarn, this is Lily Sugar and Cream, is that I wanna wrap around and I wanna leave about one quarter of an inch extra around the perimeter here. And what I'm going to do then is just trim my yarn and I'm going to just tie it into a weaver's knot. The weaver's knot is virtually impossible to get out and it's also the knot that they use in the stores or when the yarn is being made. So I want a little bit of extra space and then when I do the weaver's knot, I'm just gonna come in. The weaver's knot is very similar to um, also the square knot. You're gonna pull through. that. And once it's tied, this knot is virtually impossible to get out. So now that we have that information, we're just gonna try, uh, cut this nice and short because you can because it's a weaver's knot. And now we have the center ring to play with. So let's put our vase aside and let's begin to play with this. So you can use any size hook that you wanna play with that maybe matches the yarn that you're gonna do. I'm doing Karen One Pound. Uh, this is a pink color and I'm going to start off with a standing single crochet. And my goal is, is to circle around this ring and cover over top of the ring without being too compact. And if you go too compact, you're gonna pay for the price of it later. <laughs> so I wanna stick my hook into the center of the candle ring that we did or the vase or the vase ring and you're gonna pull through and then you're gonna pull through two. So you've now just attached this, the yarn to the ring. So in the past I've done this with using a coat hanger which I realize is completely unnecessary and this is a lot easier to handle in your hands as well. So I want to just single crochet around noticing that I'm trapping in the yarn strand as I go as well as part of the ring and I'll be back in just a moment when I come all the way around. When you get to the knot just jump on over it and uh, do a good job with that and I'll see you at the end of the round in a moment. As I'm working my way around this ring, I have to caution you, if you put way too many stitches in on this ring, every time we do a revolution, we are going to be multiplying the stitch count by three. So let's just say, for example, you put 100 on this ring, and the next time that you go around, there will be 300, and then the round after that, there will be 900, and etc. So just make sure that um, when you're doing this, you don't have to be to the point where it's completely jammed, unless you really want a major ruffle to happen, like major, major, and it will suck a lot of yarn. So just be conscious of that. So I think I'm almost done even though it looks like there's a little gap and what I want to do is just take out my hook because it's just easier and I wanna follow this around and make sure that this is not twisted in any weird way. Okay, so I wanna make sure everything is untwisted. So when I go to join it, it'll be a continuous revolution around. So just follow the upper 
I think that's it actually. So once you have that done, just join it to the first one and recheck it to make sure. So just slip stitch and join and recheck it to make sure that there's no twisting going on. It should resemble like the fan belt of a car. Okay. And now let's begin the next round. So I'm just turning this around because I normally crochet with the product in front of the camera not behind. Like this is what I would consider behind for your view. I always do it this way. So now that we've done that is that I'm going to chain one and then every one of these single crochets that I have I wanna place in three single crochets itself. So one, two, and three. And you'll do that all the way around for this round. And you're going to notice it's gonna start buckling and stuff and that's exactly what you're looking for to create the ruffle and it will be starting to happen in this round. Do this. This is round number one. Do this. This is technically round number two. Once you're all the way around, you're just going to slip stitch then to the beginning. You may wanna double check it to make sure that it's still not twisting in any weird way in the sense of uh, where the tops of it. So it should be going all the way around. So it should be buckling like you see, but just make sure that when you follow the top around that the top is still on the, the other side. So let's uh, begin and let's start row number three. In row number three, we're going to continue our journey and we're gonna chain up three which will count as the first double crochet and in the same one as the join you are going to place in two more double crochet. Each one of these single crochets that you placed in before are each going to get a double crochet. Nothing more, nothing less and then you're gonna start to really see it buckling up with into the wreath format. So please put in three double crochets into each stitch going all the way around. So it'll take you longer to get around now because you're tripling your work load that you just did on the last one. So I'm coming all the way around and placing in your three double crochet in each. Obviously it took you a while to get around. The next one is gonna kill you. <laughs> the last round is like oh my goodness it's never gonna end. And but that's what it is right? It's, it's a great little project and the last round is what's gonna hide in anything and make it really fill out. So you're gonna join it to the top of the chain three. And you can see that the center ring is looking like this. You can see the ruffling is going on. Everything's good so far so we think. <laughs> so let's uh, begin the final round and it's chain three again and three more double, or sorry, two more double crochet into the same one as the join. And then each double crochet, yeah that's right, it's gonna be three double crochet in each. So you're gonna triple the stitch value once again. It's a bit of a yarn eater, I'm not gonna deny that but this is a reusable item that you can use uh, for your house or whatever you're gonna do. You know maybe even make them like uh, like a beautiful red for like a wedding gift uh, like wedding table center pieces. Um, do they take that long to make? No they're just kind of boring in that sense uh, but the, the effects that once they're done is actually worth the time at least to my point of view. So continue along and I'll see you at the end of the round and I'll be right back. So I'm just coming all the way back around. I'm right at the very end and I'm just gonna slip stitch. And you can see just that last round filled everything out beautifully. I bet you were doubting that for a bit. And I'm just gonna trim my yarn and I wanna weave in the ends that we have. So let's just do that really here. And then what we have to do is that we have to shape this thing so that it will get the center ring open. That's gonna be permanent for you. So just take this and I just take it to the back side and I'm just gonna go down just capture it in some stitch work. And the best way to do this is that when you capture it make sure that you don't change the shape of it in the sense of it tugging and, and go back and forth a total of three times. Okay so once you get that done you can just trim it down. It should never fall out on you but you can do a better job if you feel like you need to. So let's take a look at the center ring. Let's just naturally open it. I have not prepared this in advance so if you see me struggling a bit the struggle is real. So all I'm just doing is that I'm just opening up the center just like you see and just kind of looking at the outside. So if there's anything that is ruffling in a weird kind of way you can just restructure yourself if you want to. You know you can go up and down and around and around and the whole nine yards. So you can do that. Then and if you want it to be a little more random, random like a coral reef you can do that too. Okay so once you have that done then you're done. 
So you can grab that vase or whatever that you want it to do and you can stick it in the hole. So let me just bend over and pick it up and there we go. And then once that's in just kind of re-fluff it back up and you're good to go. So it's a neat way to do a center piece that's completely unnecessary <laughs> but it's kind of cool and uh, when you back up you can do these kind of wreaths. Uh, probably great for decorations for possibly weddings and more and that's just something that you can do and that's all we're gonna do today. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.